a BMW executive says you should stop buying new cars, as in don't buy a new BMW, but you should replace the seats in your existing car. And if you do that, it'll feel like your car is brand new. I'll tell you why they're telling you to not buy new cars in just a minute. Uh, it's kind of bizarre, to be honest. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. If you're new to the channel, we have made more than two and a half thousand videos since we started this channel back in, I believe it was May last year. There's a lot of information there about what's going on in the electric vehicle industry and battery technology and renewable energy. And that's what this channel is all about. It's all about promoting the fact that we can have a better world. We can reverse global warming. We will eventually with your support and with your support in promoting these beliefs and these principles, everyone can learn how we can easily, not easily, but how we can definitely start to make things work much more in the favor of the planet and in our favor of our children and their children, etc. You see the point here? BMW believes though that you shouldn't be buying a car in order to save your children's lives. No, just kidding. They, don't, they didn't say that. But they did say you shouldn't buy a new car because they think you should wait until um, until they make electric cars. You know, they do make some right now, but not a lot. That's the truth. Now, you're probably getting tricked. Everyone gets tricked by the fact that BMW make EVs now. They do. They do make EVs. That's true. But the reality is the numbers we see reported by the media, they include when they report BYD's electric vehicle sales, they include their plug-in hybrids and hybrids, right? So you probably think BMW's electric vehicle sales are really good. They're, they're great. But actually, they're nowhere near as big as what you think. And BMW are aware of that. They're aware of the reality right now, which is Tesla and other car companies are taking market share from them. I mean, look at the vehicle sales in Germany this year. Tesla is starting to catch up to BMW. They're not very, very far behind. I think it's very likely in 2023, Tesla will sell more vehicles in Germany than what BMW will. So therefore BMW is saying, no, 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 don't buy any more cars. Just wait. Just wait until we're, we're making more EV. We're in, just wait. Just wait until we're making more EVs. Now, it wasn't very long ago that BMW was really against the idea of electric cars. In fact, on a few occasions, they said EVs don't sell. Our customers don't want them. The reason they said that is because all they were making was the BMW i3. It was really overpriced. It wasn't a very compelling product. Now in China, BMW is reducing the price of its electric cars, discounting them significantly as a result of one thing, competition, and two, the fact that they're not all that compelling because most of them are made on gasoline powered platforms, meaning they are heavy and have less range. And therefore, for the price you've got to pay for a premium EV, you're not getting a premium product. Now a top level BMW executive is saying that motorists should spend their money to keep old cars on the road rather than replacing them with new vehicles, effectively undermining the German auto giant's business model against the advice of road safety experts. Although newer cars save lives and are more energy efficient than older models, Monica Dernay, the head of BMW's sustainability team, encouraged consumers to reuse and recycle products as long as possible to minimize waste. As reported by UK publication Auto Express, Miss Dernay told attendees at a business conference in London the future used car market should adapt to encourage motorists to invest in their existing cars through upgrades to items such as interiors, instead of trading their vehicles for newer models. Now, interestingly, in countries like France, the government will actually offer you money, quite a lot of money, in fact, to get rid of your old gasoline car and buy an electric bike. Now, I like that strategy. I think that's a really good plan. Let me know what you think of that in the comment section. Miss Dernay said, we really need to think about prolonging the life of cars, not having a used car market where you sell cars to each other, but maybe take a car and extend its lifespan. The idea could be that you refresh up the interior. So I don't know why she's against having a used car market. I think a used car market is just necessary for human civilization. I, I think it doesn't make any sense to get rid of our used car market and never change to another car. I mean, what happens when you have a family? Maybe she's not considering that fact, right? I mean, if you have kids and you're currently driving a two-seat car or a car that you can't put car seats in, you don't have much choice, do you? Right? If you've got to take your kids to school, you've got to take your kids to, I don't know, the hospital, whatever, 
there's not a lot of choice. So, Miss Dernoy, I don't think you're really thinking about all use cases here and all the needs of different humans around the world. She said, we need skill sets in the aftermarket to design cars that the seat can be removed and a fresh seat can be moved in. Then it's a used car that looks like a new car. It can have the same owner who then doesn't buy a new car, but we still have a business model as BMW and all of society benefits from that. So she thinks that all you need to do to make a car new is simply replace the seats. And then you've got a new car. I mean, is this realistic? I'm not convinced. Mr. and I didn't detail what interior upgrades would be required to keep a car up to date, nor how much motorists would need to spend before the economic and environmental benefits of buying new outweighed upgrading older vehicles. Now, usually the reason people will get rid of a car is because it doesn't meet their needs anymore. Usually, not always, but usually they need a smaller car because they no longer have kids anymore or whatever. Usually I think that's why. Or the car will be, um, you know, past its use-by date. And that's what happens with a gasoline-powered car. Gasoline-powered cars last nowhere near as long as new electric cars. New electric cars now, their battery packs can clearly last for about a million kilometers or more. Clearly they can. We've seen that with new Tesla Model 3s, lithium-ion phosphate battery packs. We've seen that with BYDs, with lithium-ion phosphate battery packs in China. Those types of cars last far longer than a gasoline-powered car. Now, Ms. Dern and I said there will always be a demand for new cars and private transport, given the spread of populations outside of cities and urban areas. Can we actually just move everybody to public transport? I think the answer is no, Ms. Dern and I said. You're worried about the public transport in the UK, but if you look at the US, it's even more desolate. So I think there's still a market for cars out there. According to a 2020 report by the Australian Government's Climate Change Authority, Transport accounted for 17% of Australia's emissions. Cars alone contribute to 47% of that transport figure, or less than 8% of overall emissions, while trucks and buses account for 21% of Australia's transport emissions. In the US, the Environmental Protection Agency says 27% of greenhouse gas emissions come from the transport sector, with 57% attributed to light-duty vehicles such as cars. European Union has announced the production and sale of petrol and diesel engines will be banned by 2035, forcing BMW and other car makers on the continent to invest in zero emissions vehicles. Now, one thing that the media haven't reported on really very much at all is the new Euro 7 regulations, which will come into place in 2025. And they'll be in place from 2025 until 2035 for a 10 year period. Those regulations require about 60% less emissions from cars today. It's going to be very hard for most automakers to meet those emissions targets, especially truck vehicle producers. It's going to be even harder for them because some of the rules hit hardest when it comes to diesel-powered vehicles. It's going to be very difficult for truck owners or truck companies to build vehicles that will meet those standards. Therefore, the trucking industry would be likely to go electric first, which will significantly reduce pollution. Now, what I think Merce Sterni is missing is the point here that a used car market is not actually a bad thing. I don't really see how that's a bad thing. What I think would be a good thing to encourage, though, and I encourage it constantly, is to get an electric bike. If you can, if you're a person living in a single household, single households are the fastest growing type of household in the entire world by a huge margin, a massive margin. They're growing at a rapid rate. So for those single people in a single household, you could save a lot of money by getting rid of your car, buying an electric bike. There's no registration costs, no insurance costs. I mean, if you do want to get insurance, you can, but it's pretty cheap compared to car insurance. Maintenance is incredibly low. The price of running an electric bike is nearly nothing. I've got one, it's so, so cheap to charge and to ride it. And you're getting exercise. You can get an electric bike where you do pedal still, so you're still getting exercise. And the reality is that studies have shown people who have an electric bike burn more calories than those who don't, those who have a non-electric bike because they actually use them far more. Compliance is the key here. So you're getting a lot of exercise, you're getting out the sun, you're getting vitamin D, and you're getting a much cheaper product and overall a much better experience. So that's what I think is more of a solution here than trying to get replace the seats in your car to make it new. What else are you going to replace in it to make it new? The engine, uh, the transmission, those are some pretty expensive parts of a car. Sometimes 
the better solution is to look outside the box. Replacing the seats, I'm not so sure that is doing much, if anything, at all. Well, let me know if you agree or disagree. Do you think replacing the seats in your car will make your car feel like it's new? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.